right. Uh, so before we begin, I want to tell you a little bit about Ida Culver House Ravenna. Um, so we are an iconic retirement community in the Ravenna neighborhood. Uh, you step in the door and there might be a good chance that you recognize uh, somebody that lives here. We have a lot of local residents with deep connections to the neighborhood. And our community's name uh, carries forth the legacy of its pioneer, Miss Ida Culver, who originally created a home for retired teachers. Today, Ida Culver House Ravenna is home to residents of varied backgrounds and locales. Uh, we are set in the heart of Ravenna. Residents enjoy the charming neighborhood tree-lined streets and the lovely shops and cafe. Warmth and energy set the tone at Ida Culver House where staff and residents feel like family. And life here is all about enjoying comfort and peace of mind in a quaint, well-established Seattle neighborhood. Uh, we serve Re Ravenna and beyond, and we offer both independent and assisted living. Uh, so now is our main event. Uh, very happy to introduce uh, Beth Schmidt, who will be presenting on Downsizing 101 today. Beth Schmidt is a move manager and downsizing specialist at HB Move Management. She has assisted hundreds of clients with their moves. Whether you're moving to a new home or retirement community, Beth can provide the approach and solutions necessary to ensure a successful transition. So Beth, I'll let you take it away. Thank you. I think you're muted, Beth. Okay. There we go. Okay, Beth Schmidt here. I love working with Era Living. So we'll begin. There we go. All right. My background is I've been with HB Move Management uh, since 2006. Um, my boss hired me then. <laughs> and Hanson Brothers Moving and Storage, they own our company and they've been around since 1890, just saying. <laughs> and we've worked with Era Living for, I'd say a little more than 10 years now, I believe, for sure, yeah. So our seminar notes. When, it, when do you have this process you need to get going? Where are you moving? Why, reasons, and how to get started. And we've got all kinds of resources for you. And I wanna tell you, I'll probably mention it only about 10 more times, is you don't have to write everything down I'm saying because you just tell them, have Beth's team send us that stuff, okay? <laughs> and that way you've got it and you can read it and see it and not remember every detail of who to call for what, all right? <laughs> Okay, here's a little funny. <laughs> I don't have anything in my attic, by the way, Eric, just saying. <laughs> okay, what do we do? What do we do? Well, we organize. We can work alongside you or a family member organizing, downsizing, and maybe make it the right amount of stuff you're taking and don't take too much stuff. We can do that. We can help uh, identify donations and recycling. We can, and we can connect you with people that do recycling the right way, really do. And we can floor plan for you. We can do a little bit of move planning. We can do a quarter inch scale one, or we can do an actual size one. We've got a great kit for doing that. So we will coordinate you with the mover on that process to make it a little bit smoother. And we can set up your new home, meaning we can unpack, we can put things away, we can make your bed and Get your coffee maker out so you can, you know, get your coffee the next morning, by the way, <laughs> and remove the debris from the unpacking and such. We can set up your new apartment thinking when you have help with that, it makes things so much simpler, so much better. So, so what is downsizing? <laughs> 
I got to tell you, okay, if you're married, start with your stuff, not his, if you want to stay married anyway. I'm just saying, start with your stuff, not theirs. Downsizing is this huge trend right now. It's going on like crazy. But I think it's because people want to use their space more efficiently. They really do. And the COVID thing that's been around, um, so many people have been at home a lot and they see all this extra stuff. So they really do want to downsize. But I do have to do a little reality check, okay? <laughs> okay, from 2010 to 2030, did you know that all the people over 65 are going to increase by 80%? Okay, it's a little bit scary. By the 2030s, um, one in five people will be 85 years old. Isn't that something? Oh, my gosh. And another little bit of a reality check is the Northwest market. We don't bring in too much for antiques as they do in, in other cities and et cetera, or states like Oregon. Anyway, the internet has changed some things big time. So if you think you've got this great set of China or whatever, well, you know what? Instead of it's limited, there are hundreds and hundreds on the market on the internet. So it really has changed some of the prices. And um, I, I don't want to sound too negative on this, on this, but we're the last generation to say yes to our family stuff. So uh, that's the truth. You think they're going to want this or your family's going to take that and they say no. That's just the reality check that's going on right now. It really is. Um, and then some people will tell you, was an era living customer I helped that said, could you tell my mom that um, you're with the downsizing police, please? <laughs> so that I might have to give her a ticket if she doesn't do it right. Just kidding. All right. How do we begin? How do we begin? Yes, you can do it for an hour, two hours, whatever. But after you get started, I'm just asking you to consider the 15 minute rule. So, okay, company's coming over or whatever's happening in half an hour, but I got 15 minutes. So maybe I'll set my timer for 15 minutes and I will sort these, this drawer in the kitchen. And when the timer goes off, stop. What happens is you do it more often. You actually do do your downsizing more often. I say, get a little clipboard, walk room by room or area by area and write down the I knows. I know I no longer want this chair. I know I want to sort these three drawers because there's way too much stuff in them. You're just writing down what you, you know you want to do or get done. You might also decide to do the dot system, a red dot on things you want to keep. I mean, you want to get rid of, green dot on things you want to keep, blue dot items for the family, you know, whatever. But identify the things that you want to do and the things you want to keep and the things you want to get rid of. And then also, maybe your neighbors or a grandchild or something might want something. And if they say yes, could you say, any chance you can come and get it right away today or tomorrow? And that way it leaves and it helps. And sometimes with our donations, doing similar thing is, you know, put them in a box maybe. And maybe if you're, it's hard to say, I'm going to get rid of them. Okay, give it um, a week, a month or whatever in the entry closet or, or in your garage or something like that. But make a list. And if you do do it, check it off. And I even put a date on when I actually got it done. So begin. Let's explain what this beginning is and what it means. What do we do with our stuff is one of the biggest questions and one of the most concerning things that we have is what do I do now? What do I do with it? Okay, if you want to monetize it, there's estate sales, there's auctions, there is consignment stores, but let's talk about what they mean. If you are moving in six months or a year, that's not too soon to rule in or rule out an estate sale. Because if you start donating stuff that you don't think is of value, you might find out from the estate sale people, oh, we would have sold that. 
So let's do this. Let us refer you to a couple people. You can call or we can call and you guys make an arrangement for them to come do a walkthrough and they'll say, yes, you've got enough or you know what? No, you really don't. So not an estate sale. And the same thing with auctions. A number of times they have a couple people we've recommended have come in, packed up the things that they want to have at their auction for you and they take them away. Great. But I got to tell you, like with the estate sales, you can't be there when they do the sale. You have to have moved out. 99% of the time, they want you gone before. They don't want hundreds of people walking through your home with all your stuff there and, and whatever. So we need to rule it in or rule it out. Same thing with the auctions. And you want to count on about 30 to 65% fee for, for those ways of selling your things. But they will talk with you about it and you'll get a plan going. Consignment is 30, 65 percent, whatever. But with consignments, typically you might have to send them some photos and that might be sufficient. But most of the time you need to take your stuff to them and let them look at it and say, hmm, this will fit in my store or oops, no, it really won't. So there are ways <laughs> that you need to handle these things. But maybe you just need a couple of, you know, antique dealers or, you know, somebody that specializes in this particular thing, that particular thing to come and see you. You'll send them some photos or you'll send us the photos, we'll send it to them and they will make an appointment with you. They'll come and see you and then they'll offer you money and you might say yes and they'll pay it and they'll take it away. Sometimes working with dealers works simple and really, really good. I want to tell you though, in all these occasions, look up the thriftshopper.com. I'll send it to you, don't worry. And it will list hundreds. You'll put the zip code down of, you know, where you want to donate something or where, you know, anyway. And it will list all kinds of places, their address, their phone numbers, and maybe what they will take. So the thriftshopper.com is a great, great piece of information for you it is and donations ugh, so many people want our stuff so many people do at that we give them to st vinnie's uh, you know salvation army uh, lots of places but we can also do unique donations hook you up with somebody at sometimes it's at a museum sometimes it's at children's hospital sometimes you know whatever it feels good to give to uh, like, you know, the women's shelter or, you know, uh, children's hospital, bargain boutique people. But another thing is for recycle is kingcounty.gov solid waste, you know, this forward slash solid waste. And that way it will list who, it, it, as soon as you key into that, it'll say, you know, what are you looking to get rid of? And then up will come an address and a phone number of a place that don't that handles your solid waste the right way, which is so cool. It really is. And sometimes you have torn clothing, mismatched shoes, this and that. Put them in a, a 13 gallon white garbage bag like we have in the kitchens and label it thread cycle. And you can find all about that on kingcounty.gov forward slash um, solid waste. Yes, you can. They use all those products in that bag that you labeled thrift cycle the proper way. They do good things with it. It isn't just thrown into the soil. <laughs> anyway, what do I do with my stuff? We're going to go into details now. We've got people that we can send to you, by the way, that do the recycling. Great junk guys that we've used for more than 10 years that are very fair priced and sometimes they'll drop off donations and such for you too. But furniture, well, <laughs> yes, it will sell at your estate sale. Yes, it will sell uh, at your auctions. And, but there are some things I need to tell you about. Your goal in selling your furniture is to make 10% of what you paid cash for. I know that sounds crazy, but um, that's your goal. And sometimes you'll meet your goal and then other times you actually won't, <laughs> just saying. 
But we were the last generation to say yes, we were. So a lot of our kids don't want our big stuff. They don't want this and that and whatever. So it's a bit challenging. Some places, even donation sites are saying no to huge pieces of furniture. They really are. Um, you know, sometimes I've sent off pictures to Habitat for Humanity and they've said, oh yeah, we'll be there. We'll just get them all. <laughs> Fantastic, you know, that's, that's great. But I wanna tell you, what is trending here is mid-century. It is selling and it's doing pretty dang good on the prices and such, but you know what? The depression era furniture is not doing much at all. And the reason is it was mass produced. Some of us bought it and our parents bought it. And when their things are mass produced they don't hold their prices. They don't hold the value. And so that's, you know, kind of hard you know, information to get. But how about this, a 1920s Windsor chair, mid-century, sold for $120. Okay, but a 1960s copy of that Windsor chair, 1960, sold for 2000. So um, it's not just the age of something. Uh, it's, it's the interest, the quality, whatever. But again, if you wanna consign something, furniture, you're going to need to take it to them. I'd say more than 90% of the time, they're gonna want to see it, to see if it goes in their store. Okay, um, how about I move on to the next one? This is a challenge, clothing. Our closets are loaded with stuff, our drawers and such. So let's identify what we want and what we don't want. And one way to do it is to say, Hmm, when was the last time I wore this? Oh, okay. If I went to the store today and I bought it again, would I wear it? And if the answer is no, it's time to give up some of that clothing. And I will say a quick and easy way, a simple way of sorting a closet. You can do it two ways. One, this section is what I want to get rid of. This section is what I think I want to keep. And this section over here is can I sell it? All right, but try this. It's, I call it the reverse coat hanger trick. <laughs> right now we, we put our coat hangers on the rod like this, you know, and then I'm saying put them all reversed, turn it the other way so it's hanging, looking at you. And if you wear that clothing, turn it around the hanger and put it back on there after you've worn it. And that way in a few months, you can see, oh, I wore all these right here. Or I didn't even wear that, you're kidding me. That was one of my spring things and now it's going into winter, wow. Okay, that's a reverse coat hanger thing. I will say your clothing will sell at an estate sale. It will sometimes sell at an auction, sometimes. On consignment, you have to call and make an appointment. You have to take to them the clothing, et cetera, and shoes, whatever, but, but it has to be in pretty pristine condition. It needs to have been recently um, dry cleaned and for you to take the things. And typically they'll go through what you brought and might keep 10% of it. And then you're taking all the rest back with you. So donation is a great place to give clothing. It really is. Mary's place. Um, a dress for success, and then women's groups and such like that, you'd be surprised. They are so appreciative getting that clothing, it is. And look in that thriftshopper.com and it will list a bunch of stuff too as well. But I also wanna say it will sell, they will, and it's great to donate the things. But if you, donate or have clothing that's, you know, you know, all bad looking, whatever, there's places to give that to. There really are. And we'll list a few of them coming up here. All right, kitchen items. Yes, they'll sell at estate sale. Yes, the, some of them will sell at your auction. And a few places, consignment places, will take some of your kitchen things. And I will say, when you're in your kitchen and you take a look at all that stuff, take out the duplicates, 
take out, do you really need 28 mugs, coffee mugs, really? Do you need seven can openers? Mm, probably not. Identify and take out the extras. Put them in a, a small box, not you know huge, a small box. And then if you're really ready to get rid of it, you put it in the back of your car and take it and drop it off for donations. But I will say, there is a couple of consignment places that, you know, like one of them said, no, we don't need that Waterford Crystal. And I'm like, what? How can somebody not want Waterford Crystal? Well, it's not close to the holidays and that's when they really sell and I don't want to take up space in my store. Oh, okay, I didn't think of that. But I will say, if you've got some really fancy china, remember remember the old ones, uh, beautiful Haviland or Rosenthal or whatever, they used to bring $100 a plate. You can't get 10 now a plate. But I always say, if you've got a full collection, maybe call Replacements Unlimited and see if they need it. Sometimes they buy it from you. Just, just saying, they do. Um, but because of the internet, because you think you've got this and it looks great and whatever, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of that on the internet. So it didn't hold the prices like you thought you could in trying to sell it. But kitchen items are fabulous to donate. I mean it. So many organizations want them. They really do. And that's a good way to good way to do it. It is. Okay, books. What do I do with my books? Well, because of COVID, a lot of our libraries are not taking you know, book donations right now, but it's worth a phone call. It is, it actually is like, they might have a, a small group or whatever going on that we didn't think of. But recently, like last week, Goodwill, St. Vincent de Paul, Salvation Army, um, uh, those places all took a couple boxes of books donated from our, our clients. And they will sell a little bit at an estate sale, sometimes at an auction. Um, but it's a tough one. We've got some good contacts for you for books. This one is fabulous. It's called Seattle Bookman, and we'll give you his phone number and the information. He'll come to you, get your books every now and then he might buy some from you, but he will. And that way you didn't have anything else to have to worry about packing them up, putting them in your car or whatever. Mangus Books buys, sells, and trades too. Mangus Books is, I think, around Fremont, um, as I recall. Um, and they will definitely, like I say, buy, sell, trade. But you want to give them a phone call and verify if you're going to bring it to them, you know, just saying. But Seattle Bookman is a great solution to you know, process your books. What do I do with them? So let's move to the next section. Electronics. What do I do with my old electronics? Well, guess what? One Green Planet is fabulous. Um, it's in Renton. I think they got one south of Renton uh, somewhere, but they are taking almost everything. They really are even appliances, just saying. I don't think they're taking mattresses, but <laughs> electronics, go to kingcounty.gov slash solid waste. They'll give you some solutions and addresses and phone numbers of who wants what it is you have. Um, but you can also call One Green Planet and see if you have what they might want to come and pick up. It's worth a call and save you some energy too. But most donation places, Salvation Army, um, Goodwill, uh, a bunch of them are taking old electronics. They're not taking the great big huge deep TV that we used to have when we were growing up, just saying. But it's if you've got some, they'll pretty much they're taking it, they are. Okay, this is an interesting one. Pictures, what do I do with all those pictures and movies and slides and this and that, whatever. I will say there are some organizations, couple that I've used that are wonderful. It's worth it to do something with your pictures, maybe sort them, put them in a, you know, Ziploc bags and in containers or whatever together, but maybe put a post-it on the back that says who it is in these pictures. We've got some pictures of, I think they're relatives, but both of my parents are gone now. And 
we have nobody to ask. Of course, I'm going to see my cousins this summer, and I'm going to ask them if they know who it is. But anyway, um, scancafe.com and Legacy Box. They send you a box. You put your stuff in it, and they take care of, of pictures. They actually did letters and stuff like that um, that we had. Who knew my mom wrote this letter? Who knew I wrote that letter to them? Whatever. It was amazing. My brother sent off five big totes of slides, movies, pictures, letters, everything. This is before these companies were around doing it. And they, the coloring and such wasn't as perfect as they do now. But I got to tell you, having all of that stuff digitized is wonderful for our whole family. It honestly is. It's wonderful. We had a teacher that we moved. She was a teacher up in Bellingham. And she had to downsize. She was moving into assisted living. And so what are we going to do with this? And, and she loved her life as a teacher. What? So we put those pictures together, a couple of interesting uh, big pictures and events that happened up there and uh, some of her student information letters and such. We sent that back up to Bellingham, the school that she worked at and the letter, the thank you she got back was touching. It really, really was. Sometimes it's really cool to do things with your pictures. And I gotta say another, some other people that we moved, they had uh, World War I photos and World War II photos. I'm wondering, what do I do with these? They're, they're big, they're beautiful. They're, they're what? Well, we had moved Mohai and you know what that, let's ask them, would you want these? We got a yes, we did. So scancafe.com, legacybox.com and imemories. Dot com. Those are the really good ones that will do uh, VHS, cassettes, slides, movies, picture. Oh, I'm just saying that uh, Polaroid that you have, that's a cool picture, but it's so faded out. They correct that. And it looks brand new. It really does. So taking care of our pictures is a good thing to do for you and for your family. And to make a sample of a, a coffee table book, you know. Pick $25 worth of pictures and use the $25 Costco uh, coffee table book thing and tell your kids to move those pictures into there and write these words that you want on there. And you've got a sample of a coffee table book. Was that a good idea? Yes, it was. Okay, pictures, but let's go into music. Music, guess what? Vinyl is selling. It is. And a couple months ago, it was reported that more vinyls were sold than CDs that month. Go figure. Look up vinylhub.com. And that will kind of tell you in your area if somebody wants to buy your music, if you want to drop it off or if you want to trade or, or whatever. It's worth looking at it. It does sell at the estate sales. It sometimes will sell at your auctions and such. But if you're going to try to take it to a store, you have to call and make an appointment for consignment. And maybe they'll keep 10%, maybe. And then you're taking the rest home. So it's a little bit of a challenge. It's worth the call. But guess what? Golden Oldies in the U District, they buy, sell, trade. Uh, Jive Time Records, that's I think around Fremont. Anyway, they definitely can give you some information about what you have. Is it worth, do they want it or whatever? I'm just saying, there are things that we can do with our music. It's, it's really cool. Okay, when do we start? When do we start and get going? <laughs> Guess what that means? You start now. Better, sooner is better to start. It is. And it feels good to get downsizing decisions made and done. It really does. And then we have these, um, and we can send them to you, uh, resources. Uh, you'll love them. Donation valuation. What were your donations worth that you just dropped off and whatever? We can send you that information. Downsizing tips. We have sheets that we can send to you. Timelines that we can send you. 
And we have the one that's the document retention guide. That, who knew that's how long you kept this or kept that, or supposed to. So we can send you all that information. It's worth it. Uh, we have some forms for your area, like if you're in Bellevue, you know, we have things that are on the east side and whatever, for donation resources. So we can, we can send you the information. And then how HB Move Management works. This is it. Just give us a call. Just give us a call. And we and you can identify what your needs are, what would be helpful to you, what services do you need. And we can, of course, connect you with that. And we'll, we can create a personalized plan. We can actually do that for you. So this is what I need to do, what I don't need to do, and this is who to call, whatever. And we will coordinate each of these services and also with your mover, Hanson Brothers, um, to make sure this is a successful process. That's what we do and how we work. Just give us a call and we'll get it started with you. Totally. Okay, this is kind of funny. <laughs> when to get started? When was the best time to plant a tree? Eric said it was 20 years ago. Uh, the second best time is right now. So it's kind of the same thing. Let's get started right now. And Hanson Brothers and HB Move Management will send you a salesperson who will come out and create a master plan for you. This is about what you want to move. This is about your needs and this and that. That's, that's what we can, when you're starting early, we can get this done for you and connect you with the right people or help you sell your items. I mean, we've had people that had no realtor and they needed to sell their house and we gave them the name of a couple of realtors. Why not? This is kind of things that we can connect you. We've actually even prepared their home for going on the market. So when we moved them out, they had a little list of, you know, my realtor said, move this here, move that. And that's what this, this, the guys did on the move. They moved it around a little bit and it was really, really helpful. Packing your belongings. We can get a plan going for that and when, where, what. We definitely can. And I love the way we label things. We label them. It says what it is inside the box and where it goes, where it goes in your new, new place. That's so, so helpful. And of course we unpack and get rid of all that paper packing debris too. And we can resettle your home. We can Put things away, make your bed, get out that coffee maker, so, you know, and function. And uh, your drawers in the bathroom can have things that you know what it is and why it is there. And, and it's really helpful. It's, it's really helpful. We can get started. Give us a call. And starting early is great. Here's our information. Please give us a call. Questions, anybody? I might be able to answer if you ask me a couple of questions. It doesn't look like we have any in the chat. If anybody has a question, uh, please put it in the chat and I'll read it to Beth. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Beth. This is all very informative and um, very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, well, let's just give them a call, tell them or give us a call and tell us to send you some of the things that you need. I've got one right here that's uh, the donation valuation guide. Really, it even says what some of your books are worth, et cetera, for donation, um, you know, tax purposes, whatever. So, and then some of the other, oh, by the way, call eight, um, what is it? Uh, ATG, the government, what, the attorney general's office, and you can just look it up online and say free shred events. They've got several coming up and you can drop them off and we'll send you addresses and phone numbers, et cetera, for other shred companies. But they've got some free ones coming up and just look it up. Beth, we did get a question. So okay. Barbara had a question that says, I have an inherited ivory. 
How can I sell all old? <laughs> okay. We've got a good dealer we can connect you with. It'd be, it'd be good if you could send a couple of photographs of them. That would be fantastic. And, and we need to, you need to be careful with it. And we can connect you with a dealer to come and look at it. And he'll get, he's been in the business for 35 plus years. And this, depending on what kind of ivory it is, you know, because it's got a thing going on now that they don't want anybody to have it or to sell it or whatever, but it's worth, take the photo, we'll send it off to our uh, antique dealer and he'll tell you what to do. And that's wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right, uh, last chance. Put any questions in the chat. <laughs> you have a question, Eric? Yeah, I see a question, and that is where you, you talked a lot about different things. What's your recommendation about where someone starts in their home? Okay, where to start? In my experience <laughs> of moving and helping other people, the kitchen is a good one. Definitely, you know, get in your closet stuff because people bring too much from their closet in their bedroom and then also too much kitchen stuff and probably some too much bathroom stuff. Those are simple areas that you can get started on and it will really help with your move. It honestly will. It really will. And Beth, what percentage of customers you work with bring too much stuff? Um... Uh, if if they let me help them, <laughs> our team help, um, uh, they didn't bring too much usually because, you know, we help out with the floor plan. We help out. I even cut out sizes of a piece of paper for drawers to say, okay, you got three of these drawers now here. Will this stuff fit in it? What, you know, that kind of a thing. So I would say maybe 20% um, bring too much. But if they know that I'm the downsizing police and I might, you know, give them a ticket. They all downsize perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have uh, any other questions, but Beth, thank you so much. This was very informative. I personally can't imagine. I would love to have somebody pack up my whole house for me. You know, what a, what a great resource. Um, and I think we definitely all learned something new today. Uh, so we'll be emailing everybody an evaluation form, and we'd love to hear your feedback on the presentation. Um, and if you want to have a, the recording, that would be helpful. Um, for any suggestions in the future, please let us know. And if you have any questions uh, about Ida Clover House Ravenna, you can give us a call. Um, or if you would like to get in touch with HB Move Management and Beth. Well, Beth Schmidt, thank you so much. I hope everybody has a great afternoon and please reach out if you have further questions. Thank yes. you. And we'll send you the information. Okay, great. Thank you.